Okay, welcome to everybody from my side as well. I'm really happy to uh, give this webinar on how to produce informative and low-cost videos. My background is uh, I'm an agricultural engineer working since 30 years nearly at Feeble. The first 10 years I was in research, then I moved for another 10 years into communication and since about 10 years, Matthias mentioned it, I'm producing videos more and more also at international level. Here is the content of my workshop. Uh, first, I give a short introduction. Then we talk about the equipment. Third point is uh, the planning of a video, the filming itself and the editing at the end. And uh, as Matthias also mentioned, we have a, after each block, we have a short uh, question and answer. Uh, section where you can also share your experiences. You have in the when you made your application to this webinar, some of you have already uh, mentioned some questions. If I try to answer them in my presentation, if not, then please add them to your chat again. So, why to produce your own video? Uh, I think video is really a powerful dissemination tool. It really is a great opportunity to share knowledge of stakeholders, especially farmers, but also advisors and researchers. And you can, for instance, if you do a demo activity or a field day in your uh, organization, then you can increase the reach out of these days. You do a lot of preparation work when, when uh, planning these events, and you have perhaps 50 or 100 or 200 people attending. And if you do a video on specific topics of these field days, then you can reach out up to 1,000 or 10,000 or even 100,000 uh, visitors on YouTube. And last but not least, the equipment nowadays is really good, simple and not so expensive anymore. Here I have listed uh, different options of video applications in agriculture. First of all, and very popular, are machine demonstrations. Uh, or you show practice innovation. You can also do tutorials in a field or in a greenhouse like here in the examples. You can do tutorials in a studio in brackets. Or you can uh, cover events, you can uh, promote research projects, you can do teaser of publications, for instance, or promotional videos. You only can do uh, enrich on online texts, for instance, on your websites, or you can do, as we do now, uh, webinars. And last but not least, the uh, animated PowerPoints, that's an uh, other option, which I will show you at the end, which is more simple than doing a video. Each video is, uh, consists of three steps, and this is really important. So first step is the planning, which includes also the equipment. You have to decide what equipment to buy if you don't have yet. Then second is the production itself, the filming, and uh, the last step is editing and dissemination. And I think really um, that each of these steps are equally important to produce uh, successful videos. So first, I would like to talk about the equipment, what to choose for, for your videos. First of all is uh, your smartphone, of course. It's cheap, it's always at hand. The picture quality of the new generation is, is excellent um, and it's easy to operate. But there are but, uh, some shortcomings. You need really an external microphone to, because uh, you might say, yes, but my smartphone has really excellent audio quality, so um, I don't need it. But as soon as you go outside, filming outside, and there is a bit of wind, then um, you have these terrible wind noises. And what I also find a disadvantage of um, uh, smartphones is that you have difficulties to control the image in uh, bright sunlight. And of course, uh, you have no zoom. For new smartphones like uh, iPhone 11, there you have some tele 
uh, functions, but usually you don't have uh, Zoom. The next, next option would be just normal video cams, like this one here. I think they are um, excellent um, because you have Zoom uh, option. And you have, for instance, like uh, on a model like this, you have this um, viewfinder, which helps you to, to film also in bright sunlight. And the handling of a video camera is, is much easier than with a, with a smartphone, I think. And the last option is to use your photo camera, like the one here. This is also a good option because picture quality is even sometimes even better than in normal uh, uh, cameras. You have this so-called cinematic look with uh, some of these cameras, but I find the handling needs exercise. It's, it's not so easy to, to take uh, um, steady pictures. And again, the picture control here, the monitor, the display is much smaller, so you might uh, have an additional monitor to this and also here with this um, uh, cage it's called you have an option of a handle and then it becomes really a good um, camera I think. Next important step is external microphone. I already told you with the smartphone but also with every other camera with built-in microphones they are not enough and especially because we want to make very informative uh, videos of good quality. A good sound is essential. Why is it so important? With these external microphones, you can plug in a so-called dead cat, something like that. Or for other microphones, you have this. It's also a dead cat. And this prevents you from wind. The most cheapest um, Lavalier microphone, this one here, you can clip it on the person you are interviewing here, uh, comes from about 20 euros. So it's not really a big, big um, investment. The next one, next type of a microphone would be the so-called shotgun microphones. You can use them either with your smartphone or, or with your um, uh, camera. It goes with both. Important, it's not only with this shotgun microphone, if you use it uh, with your smartphone, you have to uh, take the, the plug-in which has three rings here. And if you use it um, with your um, camera, then you have to use it with a plug-in with two rings. So there are two different um, plugins but usually the, these microphones come with both you you can uh, choose and then the best option in my opinion is to use a wireless microphone here for example we have this wireless uh, Rode Go which costs about 160 euro and with this you can for instance here this goes to the camera this is the receiver and here this goes to the person you are interviewing uh, you can either use it directly with a microphone in here you can plug it again to the person you are interviewing or you can also add a lavalier microphone to it and i think that's even the better uh, solution so about 460 euros you have an excellent option for every every circumstances. Um, next point to, to pay your attention on, uh, on the equipment is that you should stabilize your video. If you're using a smartphone, you can buy yourself a rig that makes it uh, possible that you can hold your smartphone already with two hands and, and you have also the possibility to, to add some um, light, for instance, like this, or as mentioned, uh, an external microphone, which will go up here. So with this, you can pimp up your, your smartphone already a lot. And you can even here, you can add a tripod 
to it and then you have a perfect uh, solution. Next one would be a gimbal, uh, which is shown here. A gimbal is um, a stabilizer. Uh, they um, stabilize your picture. I haven't got one here, I forgot. But anyway, uh, they are available from DJI. They are the third generation they have now for about 100 euro. DJI Osmo 3, it's called. And this one is even, you can fold it together so it's really small and it stabilizes your picture and you get like this steady cam pictures with this gimbal. So another investment I would uh, could recommend. A bit cheaper is this shoulder rig, which you can use for your camera. And of course, the classical one is the tripod. Here you have to uh, pay attention that you don't use the tripod, which you usually use for photography. Uh, you should use a specific video tripod with a so-called video head or fluid head, which makes it possible that you can smoothly move, uh, zoom and pan uh, the head and your camera with it. So that's for the stabilization of the picture. And then I have here some nice to have equipment. Um, first of all, an action cam, like uh, this GoPro here is really useful in agriculture, especially if you want to film machinery. You can add a magnetic uh, device here. You can just stick it on the machinery in the back and take your pictures. I also use this uh, cage, it's a waterproof uh, cage, uh, so I really go under every machinery, even if, the, if there is a lot of dust and uh, stones even, so it doesn't uh, do any harm to the uh, equipment. And you can get spectacular pictures like this, pictures which the normal uh, visitor of a machinery demonstration never sees. So this is really an added value, I think. And then the next one will be a drone. I really uh, can recommend for agriculture, I can recommend drones because often you only see from above the effect of a field trial or whatever. So drones are fantastic. Uh, of course, they make a lot of noise. They're a bit disturbing. You can't use them really if there is a demo in the field going on, but you can do it beforehand, showing the tractors and whatever. What is to say here, I really would recommend to buy if you don't already have a, a drone, I would recommend to buy this Mavic Air Mini. Why? Um, this Mavic Air Mini is uh, 249 grams heavy. So that's below the limit of where you need then a registration. So if you are in an organization where several people should use the drone because it's really easy to, to use it, then um, you can do it with this Mavic Air Mini, which seems like a toy, but it has an excellent picture quality, an excellent flying characteristics. I uh, really can recommend this drone. Then last point is a new camera, which I, which is on the market already uh, nearly since a year. It's a combination of this action cam and this drone cam, it's called DJI Osmo Pocket. I've seen it quite a while uh, that it's around, but I didn't take it seriously because it's so small. I thought it's just a toy, but in the last webinar I did, so, uh, somebody of the participants uh, told or said that she uses only this camera and she was so happy. So I searched a bit about it and it's really fantastic. Uh, you also can add this external microphone like this um, Rode Wireless Go and then you have a fully 4K picture quality and with an excellent sound. So it looks like a toy, but it, it has much more uh, behind it. So. That's the first block about the equipment. Uh, I hope there are lots of questions in the chat or uh, Matthias, how does it look like? 
Uh, to me, it looks empty. Are there any questions um, concerning uh, what was said now <clears throat> about the equipment, etc.? Or for those who already are in the process of video making, uh, what are your experiences now? What kind of equipment did you buy? And can you you can also share that? Hello, Casimir. Share with us. Yes. So basically. Uh... In terms of technology, I've had a very bad experience from this Asden Pro uh, XD, uh, which is which is similar to the Rode uh, Go wireless. Uh, the microphone. <clears throat> yeah, yes, for the microphone. And uh, um, so that's something. If you if you, and uh, the issue I had was 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 that I was in a room, and. Uh, I had it connected to a Zoom, um, uh, this kind of uh, Zoom recorder, and and uh, it it the, the sound quality was very bad. I mean, it was chopping all the time. And uh, so what I did, I I asked I asked Thomas for 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 uh, another sort of alternative, and he came up with this Rode Wireless Go. Um, and I've been using that for 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 a couple of times now, and it's 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 been working flawlessly. Mm -hmm. So 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 there's really a, a one should be careful to 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 not buy <laughs> stuff mm -hmm. that is of lesser quality, because in the end, you know, you might end up with really bad uh, bad quality. Mm -hmm. or, I mean, the the, the audio um, track might be really really uh, choppy. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So there are pl some remarks now in the chat. Please have a look. And for the questions, uh, there is a question from Sheila. Yes, I'm here. Y your question. Oh, my question was just out of curiosity. How much could a DJI Cosmo Pocket cost? DJI Cosmo um, uh, costs 280 euros. Okay. And but you have to buy or you can buy uh, different accessories. For instance, if you already have, a, if you want to use it as a as an action cam like this um, GoPro, then you have also to buy a, a underwater cage, which costs another fifty euros. Or if you want to use um, this mi external microphone, then you have to buy an adapter, which costs another 50 euros. So in the end, it sums up uh, to about 500 if you want to use all these uh, gadgets. But the basic price is 280. And it's 4K, as I mentioned, I think. And you, you have to Google a bit. People are really excited. And um, the picture quality, I mean, I know the picture quality. It's the same camera like in here, like in the, in the drone. And the drone just makes fantastic uh, pictures. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So it seems there are no more questions. Then I would say we, would, we move on to the next uh, chapter. So I come to the uh, chapter planning and this is really important beforehand. I think you have to structure your video. So you have to, that's usually how I do my videos. It's, it's not, you don't have to do it that way. I just want to show you an example of a structure. So I, I start with an intro. I think it's very important on YouTube that in the first seconds people know why they should stay and watch your video. So you have to tell the viewer the relevance of your topic and you have to give a, a, like an out, uh, outlook to what uh, they will learn in, if they watch your video. And then you have the main part and the, what I usually do, I make different chapters uh, and I dis decide how long they will be uh, for each chapter. And then in the end, you should stop with a conclusion or a call for action. That can be if you want to uh, know more about this topic, you can read a technical leaflet or visit our website, or you can uh, just um, have a farmer who's 
kind of shares his, his experiences with a, as a conclusion. Here I would like to show you a short example of such an intro. It's about uh, 40 seconds and I just want you to watch this for a second. Organic agriculture faces a major problem with deep rooting weeds. Harrowing produces virtually no effect and hoeing with duck foot blades only superficially contacts the deeper rooting weeds, insufficiently controlling them. Stubble cultivation remains the only effective measure for deep rooting weed control. Today we will see two types of tilling machinery which can be used for stubble cultivation. There are the skim ploughs and then the cultivators. The main difference provided by... So now you have seen uh, in about 30 seconds the intro says what, what's the problem and what you're going to see in this video and then comes the title and the logos and, and who participates and so on. So right in the middle of the uh, topic, that's my credo is, is quite good. What I don't like in this intro anymore is the music. It's a bit not really uh, activating your uh, fantasy, I think. It's a bit boring. but. Um, Otherwise, I think the, bit, uh, the intro uh, fulfills its purposes. So, and then uh, we are still in the planning uh, section to understand. It, it's really important that you understand this uh, concept of A role and B role. I know for those who, of you who have done already videos, it's probably um, a bit simple, but for those who didn't, don't have much experience, it's, it's quite essential. So you have your uh, person you're interviewing, for instance, or who makes the comments on the topic. You show this person, and this is called the A-roll. You make this interview. And you might have to um, cut uh, sections out because the person speaks too long. And then in order to cover these cut, cuts, you then uh, put the B-roll pictures over the cuts and then you hide the cuts. That's one function. And the other function of the B-roll is to illustrate what the person in the A-roll is talking about. So if you just have a talking head, that becomes really boring. So that's why you have to have additional pictures, uh, which is also called footage or B-roll. Here, uh, just to again to show you in the editing program, here, for instance, you have the A-roll, this, this uh, advisor who explains things. And here I had to cut, you can see it here. And then I covered it with some details of this plant he's talking about. And I uh, shot this separately in a second uh, go. So that, that's the concept of A-roll and B-roll become back to it later. And then you also, uh, in the planning, you have to think about whether you want to use a presenter, like a farmer or an advisor, or you want to work with an, a speaker in the off. And the there are both advantages and disadvantages to this. Uh, I find the presenter per version, which I usually uh, prefer, I find it more efficient and more authentic. And, but there are disadvantages or challenges. You need to have a person who, is, uh, who likes to speak in front of a camera. You need to go, do a good planning because you only have that what the person is saying. You can't uh, adjust afterwards. You have no possibility to correct afterwards. And the time, um, the editing might be more time consuming because in, you end up with a half an hour of interview and then you have to put the pieces together and uh, to edit it. A uh, speaker, there you can be much more precise. You can write the text afterwards or adjust it, 
but I find it less authentic and it's less personal and the writing for some people uh, probably not those who like to write uh, it's not a problem for me it, it takes more time uh, to write this what is also all a good solution is it's a combination of both but in general I would say start with a presenter uh, version that would be my recommendation so and then when you have now understood this a uh, this a role and b role level that also influences then how to write your outline so your outline is essentially two columns so it's the content level what is said and the picture level, what can we show? Here is an example from uh, Legumes Translated, a uh, machine demonstration. So in the intro, the content will be uh, explain where we are, what we do, we are a demonstration on weed control, why is weed control important for uh, organic soybean production? It's the main influencing economic factor. And nowadays are important uh, new in innovations and technologies are available. So that's the intro. And then you can show on the picture level, you show the site, you show perhaps the people, you introduce the presenter, and you already should show some machinery in action so to keep, in order to keep the people uh, with your video. Then the main part would be explain the innovation step by step. That means show all the machinery presented at the event. Uh, depending on the number of machinery, you have more or less time. But make sure that you, yeah, maximum 45 seconds is enough and then really show the specification of this machinery. And if the presenter can show something at the machinery, you can show it. Uh, this picture but usually you would show mainly machine in actions and then you uh, end up with some statements of the participants what can they what did they learn or which machine suits it best on their farm or where they can get further information this is just an example from legumes translated uh, how to do such an outline of course, it depends. I would say the first video you do, you should probably spend a bit more time on this outline and then you really get aware of which pictures you have to produce at the event, at the, at the occasion. If you don't do that, if you do, don't do this planning, you're sure, you can be sure that you don't have uh, the pictures you need then in the end. So that's the planning. Uh, what are your experience so far with the planning? What are your mistakes or uh, how, how does it look like here? So are there any questions or what is your experience with, uh, with the planning? What are challenges you face? If some of you already saw this um, planning form, the outline form, as we call it. Perhaps I can uh, add a bit the experience we had now in Legumes Translated. I think the biggest challenge is really to reduce your story. I mean, people, they, they have in mind, they want to explain everything from A to Z. So that makes videos really long and often also a bit complicated. So really reduce your message to the key messages you, you really want to show. And especially if you are starting, start with a very simple topic, with a very simple message. So um, yeah, that's my main recommendation if I look at what people uh, often are ch facing challenges with. Uh, Thomas, what happens if, you know, I, I'll give you an example, a concrete example. I've just learned uh, that there's a farmer not far from here who is, he has developed a, a high welfare uh, pig production system and he is using also um, his own local gra gro locally grown grain legumes. Now, I don't know him, but I intend to telephone him and, and go and meet him and what happens when you don't know? You cannot plan what you're going to see and what mm -hmm. you will record. 
because mm -hmm. I will go there along. I will go with, I will, if I visit him, I will visit with a camera. I will say to him beforehand, listen, I'll have a camera with me. We maybe we'll do a bit of video. Yeah. yeah. But I very, don't know what I'm going to see. Yeah. Very important. Thank you very much for this uh, remark, Donald. Um, that's indeed, it's often the case that you don't know actually what you're going to meet on the place. What I do is, first of all, on the telephone, I, I do some uh, uh, search on the telephone beforehand with the actors. I ask them, uh, how does it look like? And so on, we, we discuss a bit. And then I, you get already a bit the essence of, of out of it. And then, of course, I, I search on, the, on, on Google, uh, this farm, I'm sure they have a website. So I, I try to, to search a bit, but it's really important, even though I really emphasize that you should do as much planning as you can beforehand. Stay flexible when you are on the spot. You have to um, stay flexible. And you can be fl more flexible if you have done your planning well enough beforehand. Mm. I, I think also one important part is just to make, uh, to produce an abundant of, uh, abundance of video material. Yeah, that you, I, that you can I, cut together and make a selection of later on, yeah. but less, uh, more, is, more is more in this case. And I would add stills, good quality still photographs. Also possible, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, at least in my experience, a good quality taken with a good camera, uh, you, you, when, you, when it's cut into a video nicely, you, you, the, the viewer doesn't realize it's a still. Um, thanks also for this remark. Yes, photographs can be added. And if you use the so-called Ken Burns effect, which means that the uh, picture is slowly yes. moving around, then it really doesn't interrupt the, the flow of the video. That's important. But still, I, I agree. Sometimes uh, with the photographs, you can say even more. But I find it personally, I find it really difficult to do both. Uh, at the set to do photographs and videos at the same time because you, you need a bit of different uh, set mindset. Uh, yeah. both. But uh, yes, it's important. Uh, I come uh, what what um, Matthias just said, get enough footage. I come with that, to that when we are talking about shooting. And yes, that's the case now. Uh, if there are no more questions... There, then I no, there is a... a co so if you have a look in the chat, can you uh, specify your question, please? Mm, sorry. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. I yes, I need to make a video for uh, promotion of uh, organic production of beans, and in this situation, I would like to know, or at least a tips, how to attract uh, farmers to get involved in bean production and. The idea is to introduce the beans, these uh, Barlotti beans, and then in a short, let's say one minute, uh, to give like advices for production of beans, something like, uh, this is like a, now a brainstorming uh, point. I mean, you, how to make your video appealing to, to other farmers. So yes. first uh, idea which comes in my mind, go to a leading farmer in bean production and let him explain. That would be farmer to farmer uh, learning is always the best. And um, that would my, be my recommendation. If not, then perhaps you have an advisor who can explain it well. I think it really depends on the person who is kind of presenting the thing. Uh, it needs to be some, somebody with a um, charismatic person. They have to show their enthusiasm, why they're growing the beans. And it's probably more important to show the enthusiasm than uh, all the technical details. For technical details, you can really say, if you want to know more, please check our website. There you find technical leaflets. Print is much more, much more ideal for, for these technical things. And uh, video is much better in kind of create uh, enthusiasm. So that would be my first recommendation. 
And then, of course, you, it should be short. Um, perhaps you can make it also for Facebook. There you, it should be really visualizing, showing nice pictures of beans, having short um, subtitles, short, concise uh, subtitles, not going too much into details. So uh, you have to think about what's, what would be the the most appropriate way, but um, I think always farmers, speaking to farmers is, is an excellent way. Thank you for the tips. Okay, there is one more remark about uh, the challenge is to make it to fit to five minutes. So that raises the question, what is a, how long is a good video and how long is good long enough or short yeah. enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very important. And I'm asking this question myself all the time. <laughs> um, I mean, there are, we have uh, on, on the people YouTube channel, I have long videos of 15 minutes, uh, nearly talking one person, uh, talking head, and they are very well watched. And we have short videos with lots of pictures and they are not having good view clicks. So I really don't know. But what I would recommend for the length of a video, first of all, you have to, As I mentioned in your planning, what are your key messages? And then you have to start uh, to edit a rough draft of your video. And then you have to start killing your darlings. And that means uh, shorten the video. And then perhaps you show it to a friend or a person who knows also the topic. And then they are uh, and ask them to be honest with you. And every time they start <laughs> falling asleep, they should say, here, you have to come. Because sometimes when you are so, I don't know, you are enthusiastic about how a certain situation looks like, and then you're getting too long. So for um, being short, uh, ask uh, help from a third opinion. That's um, one question. And... Yeah, uh, and if you are really have so much to say, then uh, consider to make uh, two videos out of it, make uh, part one, part two. Mm. But uh, every, uh, I mean, you can, we made a video with uh, a colleague of mine about uh, soil, uh, spade, soil spade diagnosis, uh, and it's 15 minutes long and people just like it because he is a good ent entertainer. If you have somebody who's really a good entertainer, then you can go long. If you have people who are a bit more, um, less comfortable in front of the camera, you're not doing them a favor if you let them speak too long. Mm -hmm. But it's an important question. Okay, and also on depending on the mid, uh, the the channels you want to publish the video, <coughs> the, the length must be adapted. Yes. So, yeah. like uh, as you mentioned, uh, Twitter or Facebook. Yeah, for for Twitter, whatever. the maximum length is anyway is uh, two minutes and twenty, uh, and I think really for for Twitter for Facebook you have to be more entertaining on mm. YouTube. YouTube is, is the second largest uh, search engine after Google and their people are much more searching for information. So if you want to explain a, a machine, then rather put it on, uh, on YouTube. And mm -hmm. I really find Facebook and Twitter for videos. Of course, you get um, a lot of views, but... Um, I find it less satisfying. And mm. what I observe in YouTube, you even get after years after you uploaded your, your video, you still get new viewers because exactly, as I mentioned, they search for a, a certain topic and then they come to your video and then they use it. So uh, um, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, I guess, I'm not an Instagrammer, They are much more for short-term effects. Okay. Or to, uh, if you have a video on YouTube, then announce it on, on Twitter. That's, of course, another possibility to make a link and make a short introduction to the video on Twitter or on Facebook. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next chapter, I think. Uh, yeah, we have to, yeah, now it's spinning time. Um, so, uh, producing the filming. So, that would be first uh, you produce your A roll. That means the interview. So, here are some tips for the interview. The interviewed person uh, 
you can make them sitting or standing. I prefer usually them standing. If it's a longer interview, they also can sit or if the person is moving along uh, a lot, then I let them sit or lean to, towards the tractor. And then I put always my camera in auto mode and uh, I use a tripod. So I really can focus on the interviewed person and what she's talking to me. So I really don't have to hustle about technique. If you have the chance to have a separate camera, a camera person with you, then of course you can do nice uh, shootings and uh, move around and so on. But usually you will be on your own and then you have to really rely on automatic mode. And what I always use is a headphone to check the sound. Nowadays with these new microphones, it's not so important anymore because as Kasimi, I think it was uh, mentioned, these um, new generation of microphones like this uh, Rode Wireless Go, they really work very reliable but before sometimes with this wireless you had some disturbing noises uh, or frequencies and then you had to be sure that you had uh, to control the, the sound but i still i i just feel more relaxed if i use the if i check the head, uh, sound via your headphone and uh, that was an interesting question uh, from somebody of the participants, should the moderator of a video have a fully scripted text? I prefer not. Uh, of course, you should prepare the content well, but I, it's much better if the person can speak freely. If they have to learn a text by heart, they really get tense, usually. Most people get tense and then they... they you, it's not authentic anymore. So let, prepare well, but let them speak freely. And it's very important to keep eye contact with the person and never ever say um, yes or, mm -hmm, or interesting because you can't cut that out anymore afterwards. So just uh, use nonverbal contact, but it's important to keep this contact and to confirm the person uh, that they are on the right track. To ensure a relaxed atmosphere is very important. And for this, sometimes people are, start talking and then uh, you, you know exactly now they are not on track anymore. I try to not to interrupt uh, too much. I just let them finish. And then I say, uh, then I have some kind of a, a view, a general view. And then I can say, yeah, can you please focus on this and this point and then uh, ask follow-up questions. And very often I don't, I'm not able to use the first go at all because people are not focused enough. They're probably more tense in the beginning, but after a while they forget about the video and then uh, they're getting more relaxed. And uh, that's what we want to achieve, relaxed, authentic people. So then uh, some tips for the cadrage. Very often you see this with beginners, that they say, oh, here is a head, I put it in the center and that's it. And then uh, this person, as you can compare with this lady here, this person appears much too small. And here, if you have the eye line in the upper th uh, two third, of the picture, then that makes the people appear really very present and very authentic. So that's a key role and don't go right in the middle, put it a bit left or a bit right on the right side of the picture. That makes really a nice picture of a portrait. And then we have different possibilities how to film the person. First of all, I always use a bit uh, long establishing shot to show the audience where we are and then uh, the interviews I do mostly between medium long and shoulder close-up. I don't use very much this real close-up for several reasons because mostly then people move out of the picture because I'm on my own with the camera. That's one point. Uh, people are not uh, don't have any makeup so sometimes the skin is not perfect or they have something at the teeth and so on so they are not like art um, artists or yeah 
artists and you shouldn't go too close. And I think this is quite a good um, position where you can uh, show people. And then light, of course, is uh, very important. Um, you shouldn't, um, the goal is not to have hard shadows. So that means to go out, if you are outside, to go in, into the shadow, not too much full sunlight. And if you can't avoid the sunlight, then let it, uh, the sun from the side or, um, yeah, from, from the front, of course, but then you have uh, problems with that they uh, are blended by the sunlight. If you are filming inside, then you should always uh, position your person towards the light, be it a window or be it a lamp. So the, the eyes are really well lit and there's this shiny reflex on the eye. And uh, also watch out with uh, baseball caps uh, in sunlight. Often then it just gets dark if you are outside. And uh, therefore I often ask people to take off their baseball caps. I come to the B roll. We talk now about the A roll, how to produce it. And here the key uh, rule is you have never enough footage. So please, at least uh, 30 seconds, do not pan you know, uh, or zoom during this uh, 30 seconds. Just show the picture and use various settings, long, medium shot, close-ups. And if you want to move your camera in order to give a bit more dynamic in, move it very slowly. Avoid zooming because that's really difficult. And if you want to move the camera, really move it slowly. And this is also true for, for your mobile phone. And uh, as I mentioned here, different uh, shots, long shots. I often use uh, drone pictures for long shots to show where we are and uh, to establish the scene, then uh, medium long shots to show the whole machinery or the, uh, and then we, uh, sh I show close-ups. Close-ups you can also do with the action cam or with the teleobjective and you always should also sh uh, show footage of people attending this demo, hands in the earth, searching for the effect of the uh, work done. So, uh, what are your questions for filming, your experiences, etc.? There is one question from Leopold. Hi. Um, so, I also wrote it in, in the chat, but I can also speak out, of course. Um, your photos or you, the pics you have shown us, the screenshots of the videos actually, you show heads which are sharp and the background which is blurry. Mm -hmm. um, would you say this is a kind of a good, a good practice or how it's supposed to be? I mean, I, uh, I see this is what I often also see, but I, I'm just... It's this, what is your take on this? <laughs> this is the so-called cinematic look. Uh -huh. And uh, you can get it with cameras like this one. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, that's why I, what I think is a really big advantage of these uh, cameras. Or with a, if you have a camera with a big tele, then you go quite far ahead, uh, away from the person in, you're interviewing, and then you get this blurred background. I personally like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but you need, it's a bit difficult to get it with a small camera like this or even with a smartphone. I think it's rather impossible, except for the new iPhone 11. I think with there you have a tele objective uh, in it and then you can get this effect as well. This one has a zoom and if you go into the tele, then you can do this uh, mm -hmm. cinematic look. And But the it's, a, it's the shutter, it's the shutter, uh, wie sagt man, Tiefenschärfe. Yes, Tiefenschärfe. The depth, depth of field, it's called in English. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, I think we, here we're going into already quite um, okay. uh, details. If, if you are interested more, then uh, you have to have the equipment. Mm. With uh, smartphones, it's usually not possible. Mm. 
Okay, thanks, Leo, for this question. If there are no questions, then probably uh, somebody asked in the application uh, legal questions, copyright consent. That's an important part, uh, especially in European projects. There usually you should use this consent form uh, before filming. To be honest, I don't do that. What I do, because if you go in, if you are at the farm demo event and you go with your forms uh, of the European uh, project and ask them to sign first and then film, I think most people will get a bit um, disturbed or a bit uh, not so willing to, con um, to, to work with you or to give you the interview. So what I do is just uh, go to them, uh, telling them I'm doing a video for, for this and this project. And then I send them, and then mostly they, the most, especially farmers or advisors, they are quite willing to cooperate because they know um, they are quite self-confident and uh, they're really keen on it. And, um, and then when I do the editing, I send them the first draft and then I ask them for the consent. So that's my way of doing it. And for copyright, it's also, um, I mean, that's a bit a difficult uh, thing. Uh, I don't know who asked this question. Perhaps you can specify. If not, I will say a few things about music, use of music and copyright afterwards um, in a few minutes. Okay. I have, I have a question. Um, so if you, for example, you go to a machine demonstration and uh, it is organized, let's say from, from, from FIBLE or whoever, and you will film also groups, mm -hmm. would it be sufficient if you, if you announce the event that you write, if you, there will be filming, if you do not consent, please contact us beforehand. Yeah. Do you think this is... Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very good approach and um, that's how we do it usually mm -hmm. at FIBLE. But if you are filming a person, interviewing specifically a person, you need to have their contact, okay. consent as well afterwards. But uh, groups of people, I think uh, if they're bigger than 12, then you don't need the consent of each person. It's a bit difficult there, but uh, I think the best is in, to write in the invitation that uh, there's some filming going on. Okay, thank you. So I think we can move on. Continue. So uh, we come now to the editing. And as also this short survey in the beginning has shown, most people have some experience with filming, but when it comes up to editing, that's uh, much less people. And um, editing really needs a bit of exercise. I have to say that it's, of course, the new programs uh, nowadays, they are really user-friendly, but still uh, editing, yeah, needs a bit of uh, practice. First of all, you have to decide whether I want to edit on my smartphone or my iPad or on my computer. Uh, on your smartphone, I would recommend if you, uh, for instance, if your computer isn't very powerful, then uh, most smartphones are in this sense much more powerful than certain computers. Then you have to decide what editing software to use. There are lots out there, lots of different software. I uh, listed here a few examples, the most common ones, for instance, for Android, it's Filmora Go, KineMaster is quite well known, CuteCut. They cost between nothing and about five euro if you download them. iMovie on the iPhone is an excellent uh, uh, editing program, very easy to learn, very intuitive. And then LumaFusion, which also works on the iPhone, is, is much more powerful, but it needs more exercise. It costs about 20 euro. And there are some editing programs like Adobe Premiere Brush, which work on both platforms. Here I would uh, like to recommend you to read some reviews on different editing programs. It's very much also your personal uh, taste what to choose. 
And most of these programs, also the ones you use for your computer, they offer free trials. So if you have a, a rainy Sunday afternoon, download those uh, programs and try out which one suits you best. Um, what I would recommend personally uh, is Adobe Premiere Elements. It's uh, not the best here, as you can see, it's only good but it's available for both platforms and I find it quite easy to use. There are some really powerful like this DaVinci Resolve, which is even available for nothing, a free, free software. It's a, like another one would be HitFilm. And the problem with these, they are really good programs, but they are too complex for beginners. So I really would uh, recommend you to start with a simple program uh, like Adobe Premiere Elements and first uh, test different ones like also this uh, Cyberlink Power Director is quite popular with a free trial version. And then here are some tips for editing. As I mentioned, first you have to decide whether you want to edit on your smartphone or your computer. Personally, I, I get mad if I do it on my smartphone because all this need with your fingers you have to do it but people who are more exercised on using their smartphone they, they, they can do excellent editing work on their smartphone personally i prefer my computer and then what i do is first to edit the a roll that means the voice track so i kind of cut out what is not necessary i cut out all the m's and o's it's really that's uh, sometimes a bit annoying but it really helps a lot to make it more fluid and then the people are also quite happy if they hear themselves speaking without M's and O's. And then you, once you finish that, then you place your B-roll pictures over the audio, tra audio track and then you can add titles and breaks and please do any, uh, use any effects like uh, transitions and so on very sparingly. You really can tell if somebody uses all these fancy uh, effects that he is new to the business and that you should avoid. And then add the music. So um, where to get the music from? I come back to the music afterwards. So uh, we already discussed about this length, ideal length of the video, which really doesn't exist as short as possible, as long as necessary. And um, yeah, for me, two, three minutes is, is ideal. Uh, show it to your friends and kill your darlings. And when you're planning your video, you have to be aware that one minute of video is about 100 words. So it's not much. And this goes to what I said before, details are better shown in a technical leaflet or in a brochure and in videos you should show more emotions and enthusiasm. Here is where you can get your license-free music from. This is uh, the audio library in YouTube, which is free of charge. If you have a YouTube account, you can uh, download this video, uh, these music pieces. Or if you want to be a bit more exclusive, then you can go to um, other music providers like Audio Jungle, uh, which uh, provide music apart, uh, from uh, $20 onwards. So uh, editing, questions, answers, experiences. So, is there anybody with a question or a remark? So, what those people who are editing, what do they use and how are you experiencing which programs? No? There is one using Power Director. Power Director, okay. Filmora. Filmora, yes. They, I think they are all a bit equal. They cost about the same price. It's below 100 euro. And they are quite simple. And I think to start with, they are fully, fully uh, uh, enough. Chigusa is using DaVinci Resolve. Yes, that's this uh, rather professional one. It's free costs. And yeah, if you are, I mean, it's different types of people. I personally, I don't like to... Uh, go into uh, programs too much. Um, other people are, if you are, for instance, used from uh, Photoshop, Adobe, and you are really familiar with it, you will be much more comfortable with these kind of programs. 
uh, because they get a, you get a lot uh, of value out of it. But I personally prefer it very simple. Mm. Okay, so let's continue then if there are no more inputs. Okay, now perhaps you have had the idea of, uh, oh, this is all a bit complicated. How should we uh, proceed? There's one really easy way of also making animated videos is through PowerPoint. This would be here. Here you have the classical PowerPoint. If you have, for instance, a set of uh, photographs and a project or a topic, then you can uh, put this together is five, six, seven, eight slides. What is here important, you really have to reduce uh, your, your message again to one or two sentences and to select a picture which supports these um, this, um, sentences. And then you can uh, add transitions to into PowerPoint and then export it as a, instead of a PowerPoint, you can export it as a move file. And then you have your video, which you also can upload to YouTube or whatever. So this will be, I think, especially if, uh, in European projects where you don't have much picture uh, clips available, that would be a great opportunity. Also, if you have results and graphs uh, to show it in this way. I just uh, want to show you this short example of, I think, one minute. I personally quite like this format. Of course, it's not as lively as a, as a real video, but um, exactly if you have not so much uh, footage around, and, uh, but you have good results, then you can use it. You have seen this um, result graph. You have read, if you want to show that in a video or in a, a movie, you have to really make a very, very simple graph because you can only uh, grasp about uh, uh, two, um, two different um, varianten, variants or something like that. And um, what is the most work here in this format is really to reduce your story uh, to some key sentences. That needs a bit of time but it's it's fun really to to get out the key messages of a long story i find i come to the summary and recommendations really start with a simple topic which is suitable for visualization though it shouldn't be something abstract it's really the most easiest thing is a machinery where you really can show something in action. And then prepare this outline and define your key messages. Um, select a suitable presenter. That's uh, something very important, I think, for your first video. You have to have somebody who is uh, kind of supporting your work by being very authentic. Use external microphones and tripods for the stabilization. Shoot enough B-roll and footage and plan about one day for your first editing. Perhaps you need less, but uh, it's, it's quite a long, 
you need quite a bit of time for editing. Don't be just satisfied with the first uh, version. Once you, you play around a bit, you might get to better solution. And then the dissemination goes via established channels, YouTube, etc. Um, that would be my summary. If you want to know a bit more about it, we have uh, made a, a video guide in one of these European projects, which you can then download from this link. It's available in English, Polish, French, Italian, German and Spanish. Um, I think you will get the PowerPoint after the, the uh, webinar, so you can have a look at it. Here I have prepared some uh, more slides, which I won't use because we are now at the end. But uh, if, as mentioned before, if you are interested in one of these uh, topics, then we can stay on after 2.30 and um, discuss these points afterwards. Uh, so thank you for um, your participation, of course, and I hand over to Matthias. Thanks a lot, Thomas. It was very comprehensive and very interesting. Um, are there any questions before we conclude, um, before I hand over the closing uh, to Donna? As uh, we already said, we can stay uh, for those of you who are interested in the in, in the other slides and would like to discuss a bit. We can stay a, a bit longer after three thirty. So, just for the last section, the last chapter, are there any specific questions? It seems not to be the case. So then we're coming to the end of the session. Yeah, I hope you you enjoyed. Uh, the the webinar and you could get uh, you could get a lot of info information about it and if you have uh, if you will produce a video about grain legumes uh, of any kind then we would be happy to um, put it also in the legumes translated uh, video channel or in the legume hub. So I wanted to uh, mention just a few um, different options, especially probably for those of you who are working in a research advisory organization. There uh, you might uh, face the challenge to do a tutorial. And I personally quite like this uh, tutorial style with green screen. Uh, Donald doesn't like it too much. It's too much of school television, he once said. But that's a matter of taste, of course. And um, this, this green screen technique is really simple to use. You see here the picture. Uh, can, looks... I, can I come in, Thomas? It yes. wasn't actually the green screen that I objected to. <laughs> it was the combination of the, green, the person moving on the green screen okay. and some other image moving behind them. Okay. It was. Uh, it reminded <laughs> me of a school television, yeah, BBC yeah. school television program. So green screen is fine. It's just that when you have too okay, much. Okay, thank you, Donald, for this clarification. And um, the big advantage of this green screen technique is that you can exactly you can add in the uh, back of this person, you can add uh, pictures, photographs, uh, images, whatever clips and uh, the person can explain it um, separately. Uh, here on the picture you see a lot of lamps which I uh, used here in the Fibel uh, library. It's not necessary that you use these lamps. I bought them because I thought it's necessary. They are not expensive by the way, but uh, you can do it also just with a green screen and the normal light and you get excellent uh, quality out of it. And then the question is how because people are not professional moderators, how to remember the text from these people, uh, for these people. So you can, uh, there are teleprompter apps for, uh, for instance, iPads, or you can uh, let them uh, take notes from cards uh, to rem remember the text, or you can also use a Beamer and project the text on the Beamer. So that's a really simple way to make quite uh, professional looking um, tutorials. 
Okay, then um, another situation you might uh, be uh, confronted with is filming at conferences, at uh, workshops, uh, project meetings, etc. Here, the first question is: uh, Do I want to uh, make an overview of the event? or do I pick out certain selected topics? For me, conferences are, as a such, are quite boring to make an overview, to be honest, but there are uh, all the speakers and uh, people there, all the scientists or advisors or whatever, there are experts there and you can pick out certain topics to uh, interview them and to make uh, videos on selected topics at conferences. And there, of course, you have the problem of the B-roll of footage. Um, you can show the speakers, that's a bit boring, audiences, etc. But if you have, for instance, an, an expert on, I don't know, uh, special insects or so, you can ask them to send you the picture, uh, some photos, pictures, clips even, and then you can enrich your video with this person there. So that's uh, about interviewing at conferences and it's very important if you are uh, for instance interviewing during a break in a conference with uh, some researcher or participants then you have to use this uh, so-called shotgun microphone. It's uh, unidirectional so it means it only takes the sound which is in front of the microphone and not all the surrounding sounds so that really helps you to kind of film during breaks because I personally like to film during breaks if there is some action going on in the background of the person. And then another thing which is quite often um, which I am quite often asked how to add subtitles and uh, translations on YouTube. And um, that's quite easy, unless you are not uh, filming in Swiss German. Usually uh, English, if somebody speaks a nice, more or less nice English, then uh, YouTube generates a transcript, which you can access below the video and you can, there are these three points and then you can open the transcript. Then you can copy paste this transcript out and then you have to do corrections. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, big letters and small letters are not distinguished and you can uh, edit this transcript and then you can upload it again to YouTube. So that's a really fast way of adding uh, subtitles and then of course you can uh, let this uh, transcript go through um, people and uh, translate it to different languages. Very useful for European projects. Uh, then another important thing that you um, are, be that your videos are be found on YouTube. First of all the title. Here you have maximum uh, 100 characters and it's very important that you really put in the title the key uh, elements of your uh, video. If you have for instance uh, different machinery I always put them in the description because as I said YouTube is a search engine and everything which you have written here will be searched much more easily and uh, yeah use very effective titles and then also use tags here uh, to make your video more searchable. That's another tip uh, how you can increase your audience on YouTube. Another uh, issue would be that you should uh, use this thumbnail, so-called thumbnails. Here I usually take a screenshot from the video, some, something a bit more attractive, and then I add usually the title, a short version of the title here, and add also the, the languages in which the video is available with subtitles. So that's also important for the European project, I would say, and that's all for the moment. Now, questions, other things which I didn't um, mention? Are there any more questions? Okay. Okay, it doesn't seem so. So 
thank you very much, Thomas, and thank you everybody for joining. This is the end of the webinar. Okay. And good luck to everybody. And uh, yeah, you you need to be a bit patient. Perhaps the first video isn't uh, the big success yet, but then stay on and keep. Uh, yeah, you need you need to stay with it. Okay. So goodbye, everybody. Bye.